Welcome to this explanation video on the Munkus assignment algorithm, also known as the Hungarian algorithm, used to solve the assignment problem. So what is the assignment problem? The formal definition is to find a minimum weight perfect matching in a weighted bipartite graph or matrix. So what does this mean? Here's a brief example. Say we have three workers, Alex, Ben and Charlie, who each charge a price to complete tasks 1, 2 or 3. As each worker charges different amounts for different tasks, there must be a way to assign them to tasks so that the total cost is minimised. How do we do this? This is where Munkra's algorithm comes in. The first step is to check every row and find the minimum value in that row. Once you have it, you need to subtract this minimum value from every single value in that row. We then do the same for each column subtracting the minimum value of that column with every value of that column. The next step is to cover all the zeros in our matrix with the minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines. If the number of lines is equal to the number of rows in the matrix, then we are finished and we can pick an optimal assignment and apply it to our original matrix. Otherwise we go and continue with step 4, where we have to find the smallest element that is uncovered let's say it's k, and subtract k from all other uncovered elements. We then also have to add k to all elements covered by both a horizontal and vertical line, so say it's covered twice. We then go back to step 3 with our new matrix until the number of lines is equal to the number of rows and we have our optimal assignment. So now I'll go through an example of using Munkra's algorithm. The input to the problem is a 5x5 five five matrix describing how much it costs for each worker to do each task. The desired output is a minimum cost perfect matching between workers and tasks. This can be represented in the form of a bipartite graph. So here's our input. So, our first step is to reduce the rows. Looking at the first row, we see that 8 is the minimum value. So we subtract 8 from all the row values. Row 2 has a minimum of 7, row 3 a minimum of 9, row 4 a minimum of 8, and row 5, 7. Subtracting these values from their respective row leaves us with this new matrix. Step 2 is to reduce the columns, much in the same way we just reduced the rows. Consider the first column. 1 is the smallest column value, so we subtract 1 from all of the other column values, leaving us with this new column. We do the same for every column, subtracting the smallest value in that column with every element in that column. This leaves us with this new updated matrix. But why didn't we alter the middle column? All matrix elements must be non-negative, so at least zero in value. Therefore, any column that contains at least one zero cannot be reduced any further and is left untouched. On to step three. We now want to cover all the zero elements with as few horizontal and vertical lines as possible. For this matrix, we are left with three lines covering all the zeros. A side note, you can have any arrangement of horizontal and vertical lines as you want, as long as it is the minimum amount possible. So in this case, 3. Step 4. Further reduction. First off, we need to check whether the number of lines we have drawn in our matrix is equal to the number of rows. In our case, we have 5 rows, but only 3 lines, so we have to continue with the step. We then look for the lowest uncovered element which is this one here, and subtract it from all other uncovered elements in the matrix. This minimum value has to also be added onto any elements covered twice. So adding one to the two zeros covered twice gives us this new matrix. After this is done, we can return to step three with our reduced matrix and once again cover all the zeros with the minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines, which in this case is 1, 
two, three, and four. Moving on to step four for the second time, we need to check whether the number of lines is equal to n, so five. In our case, we have four lines of five rows, therefore we can continue with the step. So now looking at the matrix, we can see that two is our lowest uncovered value. We now need to subtract two from all uncovered elements. So two minus two would be zero, four minus two would be two, again two, two, four, zero, four, and zero. We must also remember to add to any elements covered twice. So one plus two would be three, one plus two would be three, and zero plus two would be two. This gives us a new matrix which looks something like this. Now we can return to step three, where we have to cover the zero elements with the minimum number of lines. In this case, we can use four lines. One, two, three, and four. And all the zeros are covered. Again, the number of lines is not equal to our number of rows, so we may have to perform another reduction. Looking at the matrix, we see one is the minimum uncovered value. So we subtract it from every uncovered value and add it to those covered twice. Now, when we return to step three to cover our zeros, you can see that we are using five lines. This is equal to the number of rows in our matrix, so our value of n. That means an optimal matching is available. So, moving on to step five, which is picking our optimal matching. We now need to select zeros so that there is only one zero in each row and column. For example, if we select this zero in the first row, we cannot also select this zero. Following this rule, we get an optimal matching like this. Now that we have our matching, we can apply it to our original matrix. Finally, we can output our new matching to a bipartite graph, with worker 1 assigned to task 3, worker 2 assigned to task 1, worker 3 assigned to task 2, worker 4 to task 4, and worker 5 to task 5. This is an optimal matching. Adding these up gives us a total minimum cost of 50. Time complexity and runtime. Reduction of all n elements of all n rows requires looking at all the elements in our matrix. This gives us a runtime of n squared. The same goes for the reduction of all n elements in all n columns. Covering and reducing our matrix also requires us to look at every element in order to work out the minimum number of possible lines and to act on those elements accordingly. This gives us a combined complexity of n squared for steps 3 and 4. But since steps 3 and 4 are iterative, there's a chance we can run them n squared time. This gives us a total complexity of n to the power 4. Finally, selecting an optimal matching also requires n squared time. Therefore, the worst case runtime for this implementation of the Munkras algorithm is big O of n to the power of 4. Finally, a potential side case. In an instance when we have an unbalanced assignment, either more workers than tasks, or more tasks than workers, then we have to change our matrix. We can do that with the addition of a dummy row filled with zeros. And when it comes time to select your optimal matching, the worker that is assigned to the dummy is simply ignored. Thanks for watching this video and if you have any comments leave them below.